It's a Friday, the last working day of the week. Welcome to the AM News here on the AM Show. My name is Pakwisi Shandoff. So very first story, health officials in the Bono East region are ramping up efforts to vaccinate children across the region against polio. This comes after the virus was detected during routine surveillance carried out by health officials in the northern region. Bono East Regional Minister Kwesi Edujan has therefore charged parents to collaborate with the team to help vaccinate all children under five in the region. And Asabet has the rest of the story. The Bono East Regional Health Directorate of the Ghana Health Services has launched a campaign to kickstart the vaccination of children under the age of five against polio. This comes after a routine surveillance conducted by the service in May this year revealed symptoms of polio viruses in some parts of the northern region. Bono East Regional Minister Kwasi Adujan, who led the launch of the exercise, charged the public, particularly parents, to embrace the exercise which aims at preventing children against the potential effects of the polio viruses in the environment. 9,926 children under five with two drops of the oral polio vaccine in each round. The campaign starts today, the 1st of September, and ends on the 4th of September. That's the first round. The second round starts on the 6th of October and ends on the 9th of October, 2022. I plead and urge all parents and communities to avail their children for the vaccines. I also urge other stakeholders and the media to help us in advancing this cause by using your platform to create awareness and advocate for the vaccination of our children. Regional Director of Health Services Dr. Fred Makubwati noted that officials from the Ghana Health services will be dispatched to various homes and other vintage points across the region to ensure that all children under five receive the polio vaccines. But there is a need for us to protect the children, especially under five. So the country is going and backing on this campaign, which every child under five will be given the vaccines. It's by drops orally, where we'll give you two drops. We'll come to your houses, we'll come to church, churches, we'll come to marketplaces, Schools everywhere that you see health workers coming, they are coming because of this vaccination exercise to make sure that we prevent polio and Ghana is polio free. With a call on all stakeholders, including Nananum, to help in sensitizing the populace about the exercise, Nanaya Amponsa, who is the Damwama Hima of Kintampo, promised to champion the exercise by educating all, particularly mothers, to accept the vaccines. Not just a win yard, maybe a more community, no. Now, come here with dinner, now with dinner. Eighty a year, so dear, can say a pair of dying so. Say ye queen, ye be boy, ye man, no one. Womb, am I in church, no? So the bear womb, which man, a bear mre, a maum, and tea can be as on a ye queen, ye cobon, who they will, said the bear, you may do no, a bear hurry, a man necessary. The vaccination exercise is said to be conducted in two phases, from September 1 to 4th and then from October 6 to October 9 this year. Anna Sabit, Joy News, Kintampo. Now, Health Minister Kweku Wajman Menu says some regions are seeing more health infrastructure because they are more distressed in the distribution of health facilities. Speaking in an exclusive interview with Joy News, the minister said that the Ashanti region is one of such regions benefiting from health, from more health infrastructure projects under the government of the new patriotic party. Him interior of our health decks reports. Ashanti region, the electoral world bank of the new patriotic party is witnessing improvement in health infrastructure projects under President Akufuado. The Maternity and Children's Block project at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital will see 507 beds constructed under the first phase. The construction of district hospitals at Obwasi, Afijase and Ofenso are some of the projects the MPP government has started from scratch. We discovered that there were 101 districts in the country with no district hospitals. And this led to the formulation and declaration of Agenda 111. Under the Agenda 111 projects, 
The region will have five hospitals constructed at Swami, Drobonso, Sabronum, Mansun Kwanta and Chedie. Whilst existing maternity blocks at Old Tafu Garvin Hospital and Kumasi South Hospital are being completed, Kumasi South Hospital has residential facilities under construction at Abrepo. The 250-bed Ashanti Regional Hospital at Sewa, Ahafwano North District Hospital and the Asante Achim Central Municipal Hospital at Tepa and Konongo respectively are almost completed. The Adansi North District Hospital at Formina and Satre Afram Plains District Hospital at Kumewu are all ongoing. Health Minister Kwaku Ajimemenu explains why Ashanti and Oti regions are benefiting from more health infrastructure projects. The one most distressed uh, region when it comes to health infrastructure was Ashanti. Not only here. Oti, for example, is a new region, but looks like they're also distressed. And the agenda one on one projects, some things that we are putting in to complement what we are doing to ensure the president's commitment right, to get every district a facility. That is part of our investor health coverage roadmap access and easy access for everybody. These are some of the things that has driven us to be investing into these things. According to Mr. Ajimamenu, there's justification for government's huge investment in health infrastructure. The opponents are talking about, you have spent so much money, you haven't done anything. I think this will also answer some aspect of that uh, sort of um, uh, po political propaganda on my party and my government. From Kumasi, for Joy News, Oim Interior reporting. Now, a former president of the South Central Conference of the Seventh Day Adventist Church, Kwabna Anobwafo, has observed the reality of terrorism to the church and its members in the West African region. He therefore wants the church to invest in security training of its members who will serve as watchdogs while the churches are installed with CCTVs. The human interior of our security decks has more in the following report. Ghana's immediate neighbors, Burkina Faso, Togo, Ivory Coast, and Nigeria have all recorded one form of terrorism attacks or the other in recent times. In June this year, gunmen attacked the St. Francis Catholic Church in Ondo State, southwest Nigeria, killing many worshippers, including children. They fired into the congregation, then kidnapped a priest as well as other church members. A recent security report made available to the United Nations revealed the presence of terrorists in Ghana as these terrorists used the country as a point for regrouping. The Ajusu Divisional Police Commander, ACP Stephen Tani in Giza, asked the Seventh-day Adventist Church to pay attention to threats of terrorism in West African sub-region. Speaking at a camp meeting of the Krapa district of the church at Besiansi, he urged churches to invest in CCTV cameras. <laughs> A former president of the South Central Conference of the SDA Church, Pastor Dr. Kwabena Anobuafo, wants churches in Ghana to spend on physical needs of members. Dr. Buafo, who is also Dean of Students at the Valley View University, is proposing the formation of church security corps across the country. You go to beautiful churches in Ghana, in our conferences, we spend so much money on furniture, on the tiles and everything, but we forget to put security gadgets in our churches. Something like CCTV cameras. How many churches in Ghana have these things? And it doesn't cost so much. I think there's a time every church in Ghana must have this, that, this call. It's very important. Church security call. So something like that. They will be trained by security personnel so that day by day, as we, as we come to church, they will take care of this in and around church premises. Head pastor of the Krapa District Seventh day Adventist Church, Stephen Odru Bimpe, says the church is alarmed by the threat of terrorism. 
we are alarmed. It has woken us up that everyone must be alert. Seeing something, say something. If you see something strange, question. Move there, take an action. Because it will save the church, it will save the community, and it will save Ghana at large. From Kumasi, for Joy News, I'm Interior reporting. One main challenge faced by commercial drivers, tricycle operators and vehicle owners in the Upper West region over the years is the issue of adulterated fuel. The National Petroleum Authority earlier this year taxed officers to come out with measures to end the practice. Correspondent Rafik Salam checks on progress made seven months after the fiat was issued. One key concern raised by the Upper West Regional Minister, Dr. Hafiz Bin Sali, during the official tour of the Chief Executive Officer of the National Petroleum Authority, Dr. Mustafa Abdul Hamid, last February was the issue of adulterated fuel at the pumps which the latter promised to fix. Several pragmatic steps were quickly taken by the MPA Chief Executive Officer to deal with the issue which included the intensification of monitoring at the pumps and also sensitizing drivers, tricycle operators and vehicle owners on the need to buy unadulterated fuel at the pumps. It is almost seven months after the visit and operators of commercial vehicles and tricycle operators are heaping laudations and oncomiums on the MPA for the pragmatic steps taken which is of enormous benefit to them. al Nuhu Mahama is the industrial relations officer of the Upper West Branch of the Ghana Private Road Transport Union of the Trade Union Congress. Most of our Hamid visits to this place have put a lot of impact at the pumps level. We are no more experiencing any adulteration of fuel or fake fuel at the pumps. And we have to be very, very grateful to the National Petroleum Authority for coming to share an idea because we are also a stakeholder. Prime Ismaila used to work as a driver for a government organization. Upon retirement, he now owns his taxi cab. No, 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 any, this actually total. The MPA is doing good work. Uh, that one, they actually, they give us the right fuel that we take. We hear rumors that some people are job better. Actually, I have no experience in it. Wherever I buy, they rather give you the quantity. For the Secretary of Bamao Station Tricycle Operators Association, Ahmed Hissan Jimba, they used not to buy fuel at the pumps, but from gallons outside the fuel stations. As a result of that, their tar cycles began to develop false due to the adulteration of the petrol from gallons. Indeed, they have changed a lot. They have educators, uh, like educators on how to use our engines well, how to like extend the lifespan of, uh, of our engines. Uh, but like our the challenges we are facing on the market is that like the fuel rate is still high. Now, road safety advocates are asking governments to dualize the country's highways as one of the surest ways to reduce road fatalities. The National Road Safety Authority and the Building and Road Research Institute of the CSIR say the majority of road crashes can be vetted if the country's highways are dualized. The call comes at a time fatalities associated with road accidents have reduced on the Accra into one portion of the Kumasi Accra Road following the dualization of that stretch. Or in interior again. Ghana has for the first time in several years recorded a reduction in road fatalities from 1,706 in the half year in 2021 to 1,443 in 2022. This means deaths associated with road crashes reduced by 16% in the half year compared to figures recorded in the same period last year. The period also saw a marginal reduction in the number of reported cases from 16,226 in 2021 to 15,239 in 2022. We have recorded reductions in the crashes itself, reductions in the injuries, but very significant is the reductions in the deaths, which we are seeing 16 uh, percent reduction in compared to the previous year 
if you look at our records in the past, there hasn't been times where you have seen reductions in all the indicators, the crashes, injuries, and the deaths. This time round, encouraging us and motivating us to do more. But despite this feat, Greater Accra, Ashanti, Central and Eastern regions contribute 66.2% of the national road fatalities. Experts have identified failure to dualize major highways as one of the major contributors to road crashes. The Building and Road Research Institute of the CSIR has been collecting accident and road safety data for years. Daniel Asensu Jambibi is the institute's director. Just imagine two vehicles on the Kumasi Accra Road traveling at 120 kilometers per hour each. When they come together and collide, definitely the probability of a high mortality is high. And you realize that the deaths or the mortality rates with the accident data statistics shows that the mortality is high on the highways. So if you want to curb or reduce the mortality, then we need to dualize the rules. Secondly, population is increasing, activities are increasing, businesses are increasing, people are using mode of transport to convey goods and services. So it is important to expand these rules and make them dualized so that there can be efficiency, safety. The call is supported by the National Road Safety Authority that has oversight responsibility over all road safety activities in Ghana. Using the Accra and Sawam session of the Accra Kumasi Highway as a case study, the Acting Director General of NRSA, David Osafo Adontin, says fatalities have reduced since dualization of that section. It's unfortunate that we have come all this way as a country, over 60 years of independence, and we still find our major highways, a typical one being the Accra Kumasi Highway, where we have um, the, most of our uh, vehicles you know, and, and transportation running from Accra South all the way to the northern sector, uh, still single carriageway. Of course, there are certain sections that have been dualized, but the entire stretch must be dualized. In fact, where we did the dualization, from Accra all the way to Achimota all the way to Nsawam, and then continued with the Nsawam bypass, and then from the Nsawam bypass, now it's singled again until we get to Nkoko and it opens. When we did the bypass at Nsawam, there hasn't been any head-on collision since. So have we not also recorded head-on collision on the Nkoko bypass? So clearly it means that if we are able to dualize, the problem of head-on collision will be eliminated completely. Officials of the National Road Safety Authority and stakeholders have been meeting in the Ashanti region to take stock of the work of the authority. Meanwhile, the National Road Safety Authority hopes to reduce road crashes fatalities by at least 30%. From Kumasi, for Joy News, Ohim Interior reporting. A shift to a digitalized economy combined with enabling sound government policies can improve economic efficiency in all sectors. That's according to the Dean of the Faculty of Law of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Dr. Ernesto Usudapa. He was speaking at the maiden edition of an international conference on law, science and technology. The conference is under the theme... Harnessing Digitization for Economic Development, Law, the Intersection of Science and Technology. The conference attracted renowned academics and legal experts in the field of law, science and technology and other intersecting disciplines. Participants discuss key challenges that require a targeted and nuanced understanding of the cross-cutting nature of digital transformation and its policy dynamics in Ghana and Africa. Dr. Ernest Usudapa said the initiative is in line with the faculty's aim to make their activities available for national benefit. We all know how a shift to a digitalized economy combined with enabling sound government policies can improve economic efficiency in all sectors to impact positively on GDP and per capita. Due to the scope of this conference, we have attracted participants, particularly people with wide-ranging knowledge, on the key challenges 
that requires a targeted and nuanced understanding of the cross-cutting nature of digitalization, digital transformation, and its policy dynamics. Vice Chancellor of the KNOST, Professor Reta Kusia Dixon, emphasized the university's commitment to improving the digital space. She said this in a speech read on her behalf by the Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Ellis Ousudabu. In an institution of higher education focusing on research, teaching, and community service, especially in the area of science and technology, and of course, we are the premier. We will continue to research and develop applications, software, and programs to help drive the digitalization agenda, not only in the justice delivery system, but for the common use of the ordinary Ghanaian, if I'm allowed to say so. Progress. A computer engineer, have Professor Kwame Sebwate, called for policies to realize the gains in digitalization. We have to ensure a sufficient level of internet infrastructure development and digital education and also to reduce the digital divide. This brings policy makers face to face with challenges of harnessing the maximum benefits of digitalization. The law interacts with science and technology in diverse ways. These interactions will proliferate in the future with advancing technologies that present novel risks, benefits, and ethical scenarios. Reporting for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. That's all for the bulletin. My name is Pakwesi Shandoff. I live in the company of Benjamin and Bennett. Do have a pleasant weekend.